going on guys Vin here and in this tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to validate a computational fluid dynamic simulation. So in this problem we have a race car wing which is essentially an inverted airfoil. The whole idea is to create downforce instead of a lift. So as you can see our speed is 55.88 meters per second going towards the wing. You have air as the external fluid with a density of 1.225 kilogram per meter cube and a viscosity of 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 units. In fluid mechanics, there is something called the Reynolds number, which you will always use to determine if the flow is laminar or turbulent. And in this case, the formula is density times your velocity times your cord length divided by your viscosity. And that equals 700,000. Now this value is more than 400,000, so the flow is turbulent. Now for this video, I will not be showing you guys how to actually solve the simulation. It will just be a video on how to validate it, which is equally as important, especially if you're in a job and if you need to validate a simulation, you will have to prove that your simulation did solve the problem correctly and to a decently accurate scale because that can skew results and then that might put you into misbelief that you solved something the way it is, but in fact, when you do an experiment, it might not be the case. So keep that in mind. It is very important to validate any answers or any software, a CFD or FEA simulation. Okay, so our mesh, I will show you guys, it can be seen here. It is quite simple. It is, it is um, increased towards the middle because that's where you have the domain. So you need to capture any change in flow in that region. If I zoom in here, you can see I have added some inflation layers. It is more clear now. This black line is a whole bunch of layers, meshing layers together, because that is where you have a boundary layer, right? So in fluid mechanics, there's something called a boundary layer. It exceeds a little bit from the surface because the velocity of a surface, no, sorry, the velocity of a particle of fluid which sticks to a surface assumes zero velocity. So you will have your velocity increasing from the boundary layer or from the wall to your top. So in this picture, you can see the wall, which is this region here. So your speed will be increasing from the bottom all the way to the free stream velocity, which is 55.88 meters per second at the top. So now I will show you guys how to validate my simulation. The simulation has already been finished and I will show you guys a couple of techniques which can be used as a quick check to make sure that your simulation has converged quite well and it has yielded the results that you Okay, so here we are in ANSYS Fluent. You can see it has solved and you have a velocity region higher at the bottom than the top because velocity and pressure are inversely proportional in fluid mechanics. So that, that means you have a higher pressure here and then that will create a downforce going in the negative y direction because you have a suction region here since the velocity is so much higher than the top, right? So you will have a suction region there and then that will create a downforce going in the negative y. So let me show you guys how the first technique to validate the simulation. Let's check our continuity. The continuity means that the mass flow going into this inlet should equal the mass flow going into this outlet here. So m dot in minus m dot out should be zero as close to zero as possible. To do that, you will have to go on, we are in Fluent, keep in mind, not CFX. So in ANSYS Fluent, go all the way to your fluxes. Now, select mass flow rate, select your boundary, so your inlet and your outlet. You can create these selections in your geometry section. And then you will have to, the, the delta M is equal to negative it's to the power of negative nine, which means that it is almost zero. And then the simulation has converged sufficiently. Okay, so that's our first technique. Very easy. The second technique is to just do a conceptual check. You have increasing velocity, lower pressure. Lower velocity, higher pressure. So you have a, so you have a downforce going this way. You have a wake, which is separated of flow. So if I take any object here, this pencil, for instance, when flow goes over the pencil, it will separate from the top and the bottom. 
as you can see here. And this makes sense because the, the floor is going this way and then this way at the bottom and then there's a small region here where there's a wake turbulence. So that's a little unsteady region. Now, since the floor is turbulent, you will have to make sure that you have used the Spillard Almara model, which can be see, seen here in the viscosity settings. To click that, you will have to set these settings here because flow over an air file, it is always recommended to use the Spillard Almara model because that is the most accurate. It has been proven to be the most accurate. So always go with this. That would be my recommendation. And always set it to strain what's water city based because strain looks into deformation as well. So keep that in mind. And leave these settings as they are because they they have been optimized for the simulation. So Spillard Almara viscosity model. Energy has been set to on just to take temperature changes into effect because just in case you need it. So our next technique would be to check your mass imbalance between each cell. So the CFD domain has been divided into a number of cells, right? So we need to ensure that the mass flow going into one cell equals the mass flow rate going out the same cell. So to do that, I will show you guys, you will have to go on contours, go to residuals, mass imbalance and select filled or anything you want and then press the display. So you can see our min here is to the power of negative nine, which is almost zero, which is good because mass imbalance means mass flow rate going out of one cell minus the mass flow rate going in that same cell, which must be zero because then only your continuity has been proven. So you can see here, it looks quite satisfactory. It is uh, almost zero there, so that's quite good video guys thank you for watching it was quite straightforward quite simple um i hope you guys learned some answers in the process and then how to validate a simulation of cfd in my next few videos i'll be showing you guys more cfd simulations as well as more matlab stuff because those are, those are the two things i'm interested in so i will show you guys more of that till next time thank you for watching if you have any questions or comments or any feedback on the way i i showed you guys this Please leave it below. I'm open to feedback because I'm trying to grow this channel, trying to improve it. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.